Welcome to the SEC Unfiltered Platform. I am your host, Dave Schumacher from Mach 10 Sports. Eric Musselman officially heading to USC as of yesterday afternoon. No real surprise. We knew Jim Cohen kind of had that. We knew this was kind of going. Um, the surprise here, Eric Musselman, though, didn't have an agent. So I, I don't know if he went over there to represent himself. But we knew once he went over there, he was going to get a job offer. And the only way and the only reason he was going back to Fayetteville was to pack his bags. We saw that. He took the video with his family. They're heading to L.A. Eric Musselman is the new head coach for the Trojans in L.A. So we'll see how that shakes out. Uh, overall, though, I mean, it's just a weird ending. Just a weird just ending. If you would have told me last year um, with the way he beat Kansas in the round of 32, got to the second round, if you told me Muss was gone on April 4th, 2024 after the transfer portal, guys, I wouldn't have believed you. But Eric, if you go back and look at Eric Musselman's track record, he is a bit of a mercenary. Bounced around a lot of NBA jobs, Nevada, Arkansas. A little more of a program builder. A guy you want to come in, clean up a mess per se. He'll, grand slam marketer. An excellent marketer. Does a great job promoting himself his players, just the program in general, gets it out there. Goofy, cheesy, whatever you want to call it. I don't disagree with you on some of those statements in certain videos, but it is what it is. I mean, he's a he's a great marketer, uh, does a good job like that. I think his message, though, a little bit, and this is coming, obviously, coming from somebody who is not in that locker room, wasn't in that locker room in Fayetteville every day. I could see his message getting a little stale. I could see the message of Eric Musselman towards his players getting a little stale. Uh, so, Maybe a time. Maybe it was. It was just. It's a. It's a weird divorce. Just a weird divorce. I mean, if he was. If he were to come back, but once he went to that interview in Los Angeles to meet with Jim Cohen in the USC administration, he wasn't coming back except to pack his bags. I mean, how are you going to come back after such a disastrous year where they were the most disappointing team in college basketball when you factor in expectations? Like I remember John Fanta picking them. This isn't against John Fanta. This is just showing how high the expectations for Arkansas were. Last year, he was their preseason national champ. Arkansas was his preseason national champs this year. Made it to the quarterfinals of the SEC tournament. One of the bigger disappointments in a while. But, again, uh, we'll, we'll discuss that on a later day. But, again, Eric Musselman gone. But what's next for Arkansas and Hunter Yurchick, the AD for the Razorbacks? I mean, I think it comes down to really two names. Two names, Chris Beard and Will Wade. I mean, I think Jer uh, Jerome Tang from Kansas State gets thrown around a lot. Eh, I don't know. I, I, it just doesn't really get me real fired up if I'm a Razorback fan. I think there's one guy, and you make it happen, and if you don't get him, you've messed up the hire. You know, the hundred yard check. Not putting pressure on you. I just think you're messing up the hire here if you don't go get Chris Beard. If you don't go get Chris Beard. But from things I've heard, things I've read, that sounds like the plan, and it sounds like they're about 95% there. Again, I, I'm not a big, bold take. I tell you what I know, uh, but I would be shocked if a deal's not done by Monday with him, unless some things fall through. I've heard Chris Beard, through some Ole Miss channels, has done a good job, a respectable, commendable job of listening to Arkansas, hearing all the things they're going to promise him um, from an NIL perspective, obviously his salary. But I think he brought all that to Keith Carter, the Ole Miss AD and the Ole Miss administration. He's like, hey, look, here's what Arkansas has presented me. I'm going to give you a fair shot to counter. And I think that's kind of what's going on right now. But Arkansas sitting on G, waiting on O. Um, rumor was they had their plane ready in Mississippi, ready to pick him up. So I do think Chris Beard is the guy. He is the guy for Arkansas. At this point, I would say I'm about 95% certain Chris Beard is going to be the next head man in favor. And that's a phenomenal hire, especially if he can align the Ducks back with those central Arkansas, the big money people and the Razorback alumni that want a fun basketball. That's their sport at the end of the day. I know baseball, Dave Van Horn, DVH, they've done a phenomenal job. They got a big win against Ole Miss last night. But basketball is the sport. I mean, it makes a little bit more money, and that's where they really want to be. Remember, they, they won a national championship in the 90s with Nolan Richardson. So this is a basketball program that is used to success. I mean, even with Eric Musselman, I mean, you can be mad at him all you want. He wrote, he he raised the stock of the Arkansas program, whether you want to believe it or not. Just like I always said with Jimbo Fisher, people don't think I'm crazy. Jimbo Fisher raised Texas A&M's recruiting ability. Like Johnny Manziel in 2012 with his Heisman put A&M on the map from that standpoint from a national brand, making A&M kind of cool. And then you bring in an A. 
Jimbo Fisher. And again, his offense is a conversation another day, totally different sport. But I think it's similar. He, he it didn't happen as quick as there as, as it happened to Eric Musselman. But I think Jimbo Fisher's name notoriety gave AM some juice in the recruiting landscape. I think Eric Musselman did too with his background in the NBA, his dad's uh, legacy. But again, he, I mean, he went to three straight Sweet 16s, two Elite Eights. He did a phenomenal job. But I think Chris Beard's a better hire because I think Chris Beard's a top five coach in the sport. Even when he was at Ole Miss, top five coach in the sport. And I know, I know they kind of faltered, not kind of, they faltered at the end of the year. I mean, but they were undefeated through nine conference again, not a tough slate, but they did beat the NC, an NC State team that's still playing this week in Phoenix. Uh, so they they did some things. I mean, he he improved Ole Miss tremendously. I mean, I know I have some people that are like, ah, I still didn't make the tournament. It's Ole Miss basketball, people. And just improving them was a success this year, unless you just had unrealistic expectations. But Chris Beard, no doubt about it, top five coach. Remember, we're not going to get into the domestic violence stuff. I'm, I'm out of here to talk about that. I talk about sports. Um, now, we'll be touchy with subjects and stuff, but specifically, he didn't get fired at Texas. He was They were the number two ranked team in the country when he got let go at Texas. He didn't come to Ole Miss on his own accord. So, I mean, this was to be expected. If you were an Ole Miss fan and you expected to have Chris Beard uh, running your program for longer than two years, that was a little unrealistic. Maybe three years you could get me, maybe. But I think anything past two years and you're like, eh, that's a little that's a little unrealistic. So Arkansas, 100-year tricks, doing the right thing. You can't mess this up. You're sitting on third base. You're sitting on G, waiting on O. You're almost there. Finish the job. Get you a top five coach in college basketball. That looks like what they're doing. They're following that blueprint, and I think they're going to get it done from what I'm talking, from what I'm hearing from people. He's just Chris Beer's just letting Ole Miss because they took a chance on him when – Everybody was kind of turning, uh, turning away from him after la after last year conversation for another day. But I think he he respects Keith Carter and them for that, so he's going to hear him out again. I don't think they're going to be able to match Arkansas's offer from what I hear. I think I think this is going to be Arkansas's coach, but this will be a domino effect. This will be a domino effect. So Chris Beard, he goes to Arkansas, immediate top five coach in the country, top three coach in the league in the SEC, which is crazy to say. You're like, man, top five coach. In the sport, I brought, top two, top two in the SEC. I think it's him and Nate Oates right now. Him and Nate Oates right now. And that's crazy because people are like, what about Rick Barnes? I'm with you, but if I'm building my program right now, I'm taking one of those two because they're younger. No offense to Rick Barnes, but as we know, I mean, no old, uh, old father time is undefeated. So I'm going to take the younger guy to start building my program. I think it's no, a non-negotiable thing. If you're picking two guys to go run your program out of the SEC, if Chris Beard goes to Arkansas, it's Nate Oates and Chris Beard. Uh, so a phenomenal hire if Arkansas can get it done. And it looks like they're 95% there. Like I said, I think they're sitting on second base. There were rumors the plane was waiting in Mississippi to go pick him up. Again, 100 year chick is not an idiot. He, he knows. I think this has been circling since last Saturday. He knows Eric Musselman was fishing around, trying to get an escape plan. This wasn't an interview in L.A. He was going to go meet with Jim Coney and uh, USC's AD. They were going to make sure he was going to say yes and agree to the contract. Most of it was. But this could also lead to other domino effects. Remember a guy named Will Wade, head coach for the McNeese State Cowboys right now? Chris Beard leaves. Obviously, Ole Miss has a coaching a head coaching availability. If Keith Carter can do it, Keith Carter, a phenomenal human being, great person. Always heard he had some – he was very resistant to the Chris Beard hire, from what I heard. But it was Ole Miss's president, who's a big basketball guy, which hadn't really been the case at Ole Miss for. The Ole Miss president is a big basketball guy, and he kind of forced Keith Beard, uh, Keith Carter's hand, from what I heard. Kind of forced Keith Carter's hand to become uh, to to hire Chris Beard because he wants to be good at basketball. So that could be the case with Will Wade. We know he's got some stuff behind him, but again, a lot of the stuff Will Wade was doing be legal in today's time, especially at a place like Ole Miss with the Grove Collective, with Walker Jones and them who do a phenomenal job and are one of the teams that are ahead of, or one of the athletics departments, collectives, whatever you want to call it, uh, is a little bit ahead of the game. So, man, I think just by Monday, to really by the end of next week, by the end of next week, we could have Chris Beard in Fayetteville at Arkansas. Then we could have Will Wade. Coming over from McNeese State, getting his feet wet in the SEC again. Remember, coming over from LSU, they made the tournament multiple times with, Chris, with Will Wade. Will Wade did a phenomenal job at LSU until he just got in trouble. He's kind of ahead of his time, if we want to be honest a little bit. He'll be in Oxford. But again, Ole Miss fans, for the people that are listening, if he has success next year, don't think Will Wade won't, won't go jump for a bigger job. 
it just is what it is. It's the landscape now. That's kind of what Ole Miss is. But I, I'm telling you, I, I don't think we're too far off, about 75 80% chance of getting to that actual situation that I just brought to the table. Chris Beard, I'm about 95% sure he's going to be the next uh, head Razorback, head hog in favor. We're on, we're on third base, sitting on G, waiting on L. We got planes sitting on the tarmac, waiting to pick him and his family up. And then you could be doing – Keith Carter and them could be doing the same, especially if the president, who's a basketball guy at Ole Miss, the chancellor, whatever his title is at Ole Miss, um, if he wants to be good in basketball again, he may go force uh, Keith Carter, put his feet to the fire to go hire Will Wade again. Very likely, very possible. But we've been kind of sensing this coming for the past week. I was just more worried about 100-year chicken than messing this up. Because I think – let's just – in a hypothetical too, let me throw this out of here before I get you out of here. If it's not Chris Beard, if they drop the ball on the goal line, um, suicide squeeze from third base doesn't work, the plane can't get off the tarmac, they mess this Chris Beard thing up, we'll wait next in line. But, again, I think they got their ducks in a row here. Uh, uh, a lot of resentment was built up with Musselman and the boosters, I think, because Musk kept coming back from a money back. Hey, I need more money for to go get some guys in the portals of high school. They're like, dude, we just signed one of the best portal classes in the country, and we can't make it past quarter, quarterfinal Friday in Nashville, the SEC tournament. Like, come on, dude, give us a break. I mean, come on, it is what it is. So I think Beard will do a good job coming back and massaging that relationship. I think the people in Central Arkansas want to help. He has a background. He's coached at Arkansas Little Rock, took them to the NCAA tournament, so he has ties in the state. I think they want to help Chris Beard. Again, top five coach in the sport. They could be a top two coach in the league immediately at Arkansas. Expect him to maybe bring some players with him. Jemai Brakefield, Matthew Morrell. Those are names I'm hearing that he may bring to him. I'm sorry, Ole Miss fans, but if that's the case. And then – if that domino drops, Chris Beard going to Fable, I'm telling you, Will Wade to Ole Miss is likely because the Ole Miss president is a big basketball guy and he wants to be good at basketball. Like I told you, I, Keith Carter was not totally hook on and sinker on hiring Beard because of the off-the-field stuff, which is fair. There's a case to be made for that. But the president, Chancellor at Ole Miss, put, put his feet to the fire and forced that hire. But just wanted to bring you that. Eric Musselman in L.A., his back in his background, probably hanging out with his mom more. She's closer to him now. It's kind of L.A. guy, again, mercenary, bounced around. The well ran dry in Fayetteville. It was just time for a change. It just happened in a very short period of time. Chris Beard, 95% there. He's going to be going to Arkansas. And then Will Wade could be a massive domino effect here. Probably give it a week, I think, all this shakes out. I think the Chris Beard stuff should be wrapped up by Monday. But just wanted to give you an update on my thoughts, some things I'm hearing on this situation, starting with the first domino, Eric Musselman, to USC, which is going to cause, I think, a pretty – Big domino effect across the college basketball landscape, and specifically the SEC with Beard going to Arkansas and former LSU coach, current McNeese State head coach Will Wade coming back in the league to take Beard spot at Ole Miss. But again, I am Dave Shumate from Mock 10 Sports here on the SEC Unfiltered platform. Go like, subscribe. If you want things all all things SEC 24-7, 365, we're bringing you continued March Madness coverage. Alabama and Phoenix get their matchup against UConn tomorrow night. You also have SEC baseball. We're, we're starting to get in the midst of it, man. We're starting to hit the mid-grind of the season. College baseball hitting its tail. Then we got spring football. Spring football. Auburn's got their spring game tomorrow. We got a lot of teams starting to come back. I think Alabama's next week. So we got a lot of teams starting to wrap up spring past that midway point. So we got a lot coming at you. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You don't want to miss any of this. And once again, guys, you have a fantastic day.